Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh head here, back with yet another more 100% achievement guidance for part 2, slash episode 2, slash whatever you want to call it, to for The Expanse, a Telltale series. Yes, it's still back and it's better than ever. Um, ever. Even though uh, I do apologise that it's taken me a little bit longer than I thought to get episode 2 out. Um, but yeah, so at the time of recording... Um, at the end of this episode, you're going to have to make an important decision, which does affect the decision that you're going to make at the end of Chapter 3 as well. But again, I'll uh, come back more to that later on. So, once you have downloaded and we're ready to go, we should be good to go. We've got uh, nine achievements, which six are... I mean, six are sort of technically missable. Um, but they are basically just for grabbing the gifts, which if you grabbed all the scavenge items and data logs from the first chapter, you won't, uh, well, you won't be missing a ting. Anyway, enjoy the first sort of uh, seven or eight minutes of nothing, but you looking like you're going for the world's largest dump award. Oh, and Khan's hilarious dialogue coming up. Khan! Cut it! Oh, son of a cocksucking whore! <laughs> uh, 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 <sighs> How long until the pirates are back in range? Hour, maybe two, depending on burn. Same as last time. The time before that? And the tin time before that. How are you doing? I'm not the one we need to worry about. Don't tell her I said this, but Khan's the toughest person I know. I think the bullet just made her mad. Tough or not, she's going to need help soon. You'll figure something out. I know you will. Motherfuckers! Shouldn't be possible! ETA, eight minutes! They must have increased their burn this time. Uh, <sighs> don't these Pashangwalas rest? Humans rest. Pirates are fucking animals. We need to do something about your arm. Virgil has the med bay prepped and ready. It's fine! Hardly hurts anymore. We're outgunned and nearly out of fuel. Unless we come up with a plan to shake them soon, infection's gonna be the least of my problems. What do you think we should do? What do I think we should do? Besides find ourselves a captain who knows how to make decisions? I was asking your opinion. My opinion is that there is no good option. Whatever you choose will be wrong. And it's your fucking job to choose, Captain. Coordinates, 8214. What are we looking at? Fuck if I know. It's a ship's graveyard. Debris field. Caught in orbit around that body. There's nothing registered there. How do you know? Back when I was MCRN, there were reports of a proxy battle right around here with UNN forces. Never confirmed, but seemed legit. Or much more likely, it's some solar backscatter, radiation cluttering, or any other fucking thing. How sure are you? Geez, after the last few days? I'm not sure I could tell the difference between a pistol grip ratchet and a flex head. <laughs> 80%. New plan! We run for cover, in there!
Won't work, boss man. If we, if we break their lock, they'll be able to track our drive plume. There won't be a drive plume. We burn hard for here first, then cut engine and turn into orbit. Let it carry us around until we land in the debris. Slingshot, fuck yes! Good work, if there is actually something there. Stations! Con, on my word, loose a PDC volley, then turn and burn. So here we are then, this is basically everyone after a night out and they've eaten the world's largest kebab. Uh, we are going for the ultimate dump face, look at that, that is the GET OUT face isn't it? Oof. Toilet shaking, you shaking and then all of a sudden, badoosh, and life is good again, or something. Turning now! <sighs> in the debris field. It's your turrets! You did it, boss man! Fucking legend! <laughs> Quiet! We don't have much time. The pirates are searching for us, and we can't run again without more fuel and reaction mass. Arlen? Baratna and I will head out and start scanning. Captain, I'm prepped for surgery as soon as Khan is ready. <sighs> Tell that waste of oxygen I wouldn't be needing surgery if he didn't freak out the first time. I'm still here. Virgil won't let you down. He handled Rayan's surgery just fine. The prosthetic is ready. Is the, uh, patient? Fine. But you're staying to make sure Dr. Dipshit doesn't cut off the wrong arm. I'm picking up any signs of fuel. So, quite a bit of exploring to do for the first, um, lots of minutes. 
So first thing we'll do, if you turn the camera to the left, there we go, we, we can see a hole, we're gonna stick our nut straight through. Again, press the right trigger, of course, to get going. And then press, you can press the, uh, click the left stick in to go a little bit faster. So yes, it's all gonna be nice and calm until we see some pirates later on, which we're gonna avoid, and yeah, it's all gonna get, it's all gonna get good. So, what we'll do then, we are gonna drop straight down, and then right in front of us there's like a big red thing, that is the reaction masser. So, uh, that, I mean, if you're looking for a masser reaction, look no further than the 2008 Brazilian Grand Prix, in which Lewis Hamilton won the championship in the last corner. On the last lap, much to the disappointment and depressingness of everybody in Brazil. And a lot of people in Britain as well. So once that's done, then we're going to turn directly around and you can see this uh, opening. If we head to the opposite side of this room, there here is going to be our first scavenger item to grab the My Chemical Romance No tool. She's got the shakes. It's the pixie dust. But he's been clean for almost a year. He takes some meds that help keep him straight, but... But we haven't done a supply run in weeks. Yeah. Ran out of Toxiperidone three days ago. Don't worry, boss man. He'll be fine. He's tough. But, thought you should know. Maya is always well, thank you for shutting up enough for me to grab it. Much appreciated. Right, head out through the door right here. And then what we're going to do, we are going to press the right trigger to start flying. We're going to go up ever so slightly until we see the first gap in the wall, which is going to be this one right here. See the gap? There it is. And we're going to collect the next scavenge item, which is the guidance system. Guidance me to hell, where I will fight Satan. I became his birdie. Right, so from here, we'll turn around and we'll go straight in front of us with the broken sort of double doors into the, um, the mess hall. We're going to go to the right. So we're going to go through the door, find the cupboard, can be a little bit finicky, uh, but once you've opened it, you're going to get that magic, magic mushroom powder, which, I mean, <laughs> funny looking mushrooms, but still, it's what Virgil wants, and what Virgil wants, Virgil gets. Right, so, now we're going to climb up the ladder, which is to the right, well, I say climb up, we're going to fly up, and then we're just going to continue going all the way sort of up until we get to the self-propelled rounds here. This is going to be scavenge item number four already out of eight. So make sure to hold and collect the self-propelled rounds. And then once the self-propelled rounds are done, what we're gonna do, we're gonna look to the sort of right of us in order to go back down to the med bay. Again, right bumper and left bumper to sort of put yourself straight if you want to. Uh, we're gonna head to the left, go down the hallway. And we are going to fly, little bunnies, fly! Mm -hmm. And directly in front of us, then, is going to be the first mission log on this big piece of debris right here, the mm -hmm. threat assessment. That sounds pretty threatening. Don't threaten me with the good TM. So anyway, that is uh, that, that should be mission log 1 out of 15, the threat assessment done. So from here, what we'll do is we'll sort of, as you can see, we'll turn left and we'll sort of go up the hill-ish of the debris, if you want to call it the hill-ish. Go straight in front of us. And here we are in the safety zone of getting our heads cracked in. Just go straight through into the doors, and if you look up onto the ceiling, it's going to be the acceleration drugs. Now, uh, I know a lot of people who wouldn't mind some, some of the drugs, especially the acceleration ones. So, what we can do now, we'll just drop down onto the floor. Ah, nice. Give yourself a little break from gravitar and, you know, being all mashed up and stiff. So now, let's head to the left from the room we were just in. Jump over, and we're going to see a world-famous Simpson quote, i.e. the world's most, uh, well, I mean, I don't know, is, is this food? It's on this table. You don't actually have to grab it, but we're going to grab the Glav Kalash. Yes, if you know the Simpsons, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about there. Only Glav Kalash. Mmm. Ew. Ew. I'll take a crab juice. Uh, anyway, we're going to head all the way down to the floor. You can t 
tell where you are there by the sort of yellow striped uh, pattern and walkway. Go to the right. There's nothing else there. It's only the Felipe Massa sad reaction of 2008. So that is another one done. Good work, Sasata. Boss Meng, head over to the Belta ship. Time to head outside. So, where we just flicked the Felipe Massa reaction, we will fly out. And we're going to grab a couple more things. Can be quite disorientating this part, so what we'll do is head straight down for this debris. Stri go down and then sort of head to the left, so you're sort of at the bottom here of the debris. Once you are here, turn to the right and you're going to see a crate full of medicine, which we will need one for the scavenge item number six out of eight. And for an achievement later on for drugging up the twins. And of course, they're going to enjoy getting drugged up because they're all mashed up in your head and stuff. They're all mashed up. All right, so already we've only got two scavenge items left. And the next one we're going to grab is the mag boots. Now, this one can be a bit disorientating, so do apologize. Bear with me, but you need to sort of get back on top of the debris. And then if you sort of look exactly where I am right now, uh, if we just look to the right... It's, it can be kind of, um, again, can be a little bit disorientated, sorry. But there we go. If we go back a bit, just to the right, there it is. Sort of next to the big mashed up ship, if you want to call it that. Or whatever the hell it is. Anyway, go and grab yourself some K-Mag boots, some Kevin Magnuson boots. That's going to be scavenger item number seven out of eight. And in just a few minutes, we're going to grab the last one too. So for now, we're just going to continue heading straight up. We're going to blast our way through. We're going to blast the ass straight through. So follow the flashing light there to the left, and then on the left is the door. We're going to press the A button to open it with your explosive uh, 6G dump diarrhea style stuff. And away we go. Explosives are set. Good work, Kamina. Now let the whole station see what happens to traitors who sell out the OPA to the Inyas. I'm in. And we go, and we go, and we go again. And where we go, we're going to head straight up. So, again, press the right trigger to get yourself going. Look up, and then just head all the way up until we get to the very end with a red door here, the um, bridge room. Uh, what we're actually looking for, if we head up onto the top sort of deck or whatever it's called, not the comm stations, but the lockdown controls, press the A button to crisis, well, crisis button, disengaged it and then what we'll do is just head down the same hole that we just came down you can go and dry or you can spit down the hole whatever it's up to you literally whatever you prefer to do so we are going to fly down past the med bay all the way down past the cargo bay and into the engine room So there is another massive reaction there, but instead of grabbing that, we're just going to head to the right and we're going to grab the last scavenge item here in the next room. It is the data cube hacker or data. What do, what do people say? Data? Data cube hey, data. 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 Whatever it is, that's what you grab. That's, that should now be eight out of eight. So we can head back in the room here with the massive reaction. Go to the blowtorch. Uh, blow torch it open, and then we can get the mass reaction through. Found another barrel. Woo! This is loaded! Or oh, whatever the Inya say. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown! Wow! I've got some radiation from a nearby ship, the Manitoba. Scanner shows the engine is mostly intact. Maybe a few pellets too. Boss man, that's the far edge of the debris field. You'll be exposed. You two head back to the Artemis. Everyone stays on the ship, but be ready to pick me up on my order.
Captain, we're picking up a communication from the Europa's Bane. Sabaka, they locked us? No, it's a broadcast. But they must know we're close. Patch it over. There is no sense in running anymore. You know who I am, and I am looking forward to meeting you. Contact me to discuss the terms of your surrender. Or just sit and wait until we find you. It's only a matter of time. Shit, shit, shit! Cap, you got to get back here! Now then, it'd be time for the enemy! But, remember if you have changed the settings to make it basically infinity time, or infinite time, uh, you'll never really have to rush, if at all, so a lot of these will now be sort of quick time events for the next sort of 10 minutes or so. That is quite the unfortunate way to go, just blood and guts just popping out everywhere there. Yeah. I mean, hey, protein's protein, but there we go. So, of course, what we've got to do now is avoid the red lasers, which is fairly obvious since you've just seen what happened to pirate number 60 million, whatever he is. So, let us continue on. Don't go too far just yet. You just need to wait. There we go. Once uh, this one's out of the way, we can head forward. Again, he'll start going down, that's fine, but continue heading to the right and just make sure to blast straight through. Got kind of lucky. One will come through the wall here. Again, I did get lucky with that one. So just continue on forward, uh, head to the right and then to the left so we can go through the next open door. And then all, all we're going to have to do is just wait for a moment. As soon as these red lasers nip off, Toussaint, we'll call him Tossa for short. Uh, but yeah, once the red lasers go, we should be good to go. But if I'm speaking to you, then what happened to what Garrison, happened to Garrison Cox? Cox? Well, his parents call him Garrison, so that's why we uh, got rid of him straight away. Right, again, just do the same. Once the red lasers go, uh, you're free to go. But wait until this dude gets underneath. Then you can effectively just go straight on. Um, just continue on because he will. As you can see, I just about got away with that one. He'll pop out the other side. And there we go. So well done, Tossard. But in this next area, then, we will be doing some quick time events. Well, just well in the area after this one. Sorry, getting a bit ahead of myself there. So head to the right. Should still be good to go without stopping. Then we can head up. Wait until this broski bra goes to the left ski bra. Um, we're actually just going to fly down now, get some walking blood in our legs. Once it gets through, just uh, hide in this gap here. We're going to wait until he goes to the left. Come in. Come in. And there we go. Now we can just simply glide through to the other room. This is where the two pirates are. And again, um, as long as you change the settings, you should have infinite time. And the, Q, the quick time event should always be the same. The same buttons anyway. Who got the skills, man? Who got the skills? We got the skills. Right, continue on forward because we got the skills. Head straight down. Tucson, Tossa. We're going to go to the right in through this door. So I almost got caught there for being an absolute noobus. Uh, but the next room, once you go into the next room here, straight in front of us, there is going to be the next mission log, the Solenoid Analysis. Which, if I am right in saying, is the second mission log out of five. That's some pretty unlucky options right there. And of course, because we are the main protagonist, we are going to get everyone to die. Right, so we're obviously not going to go straight forward, so we're going to drop down. Obviously, the music's going to start getting all dramatic and stuff, uh, as it normally does. Head back up to the left. Um, we are almost done with this section, in fact. So, to continue on, it's going to be a bit of cutscene kicking in. Cutscene, cutscene, cutscene! Oh, yeah!
Please tell me this thing has ammo. I'm on my way. No! Everyone, stay back! What's happening? Why are the pirates pulling away? There are always more options, Captain. I'll have the coordinates. Even if I have to comb through rubble to find them. Goodbye. You're bluffing. Hello? Toussaint! Come on. Gotta be some ammo left. PDC delivery. Sabaka. I told you to stay on the ship. Reprimand me later. Just let me do my job now. I don't know what the fuck you two are doing, but I'm approaching your location on control thrusters for whenever we shove off. Glad you're back at your post. So again, just more quick time events. Again, if you haven't already, make sure to change the settings. It'll be the last time I say this, but make sure to change the settings so you've got infinite time on the quick time events. Otherwise, it's all the same, so kick ass, Captain Drumstick. I believe celebrations are in order. Coordinates are set for the MK core. Time to see what all the fucking fuss is about. With the fuel you found, we should have no problem getting there and back to Ganymede at least. And how is the new prosthetic? It'll do. Yerp, I'd say that's pretty worth cozy of a celebratory celebration right there. Right, so let us get some achievements cracking on, shall we? The first one we're going to get here is with the angriest looking poo snatch you'll ever see. So we're going to speak here with Captain Oliver Khan, the ex Bayern Munich goalkeeper. And then, how about you rest that uh, pretty little attitude of yours, douchebag? 
Anyway, once it does appear, again, you can speak to her using all the options, but if you don't have that much time and you're looking for just achievements, we are going to pick the A option in order to give her the cigar. So uh, press the A option, that'll give her the cigar. This will unlock the first achievement for this episode, Stogie for Fogey. Uh, resting! And you'll listen to a three or four minute story anyway, so tuck yourself in, make yourself a brown ski, and enjoy skiing. First taste, you earned it. <laughs> oh, Pashag. <clears throat> It tastes like burnt kibble. That's your unrefined palate. You need to smoke more to burn away all the taste buds. <coughs> My husband, Bao, used to hate when I smoked. Said it was 40 minutes of pleasure for three hours of cleaning out the air vents. He wasn't wrong. What happened to him? The Pinafore, a small transport skiff owned by Trackman. I was pilot, Bao was chief mechanic. Boring work. Little outside contact. Exactly what we wanted. There'd been reports of pirates along our heading. The usual shit. We weren't worried because... What's the point? And besides, we had our protocol. Protocol? A maneuver we practiced. In case of hostile boarding, I'd feign submission. Hands behind my head. And when Bao thought the moment was just right, he'd say the code word and hit the deck, and then... Modified SMG with heat targeting rounds. I could draw and fire the clip in five seconds, easily take out an entire raiding party. That is actually a solid tactical maneuver. Pirates wouldn't expect a weapon there, and Bao would be safe on the floor. I know. So what happened? The pirates came for us like we feared. They boarded the pinafore. I drew them in, got them occupied, and at the right moment, Bao said the word. I froze. I'd never fired live rounds in battle before, and I suddenly doubted myself. What if the clip was jammed? Would it even fire? Maybe these pirates weren't so bad. It was just a moment, but it was enough time for an antsy pirate fuck to grab me and shoot my bow. I'm so sorry, Khan. It sounds like you two really cared about each other. That's the thing. We did. It's so easy to stop caring out here. Don't you want to know the code word? Artemis. I'd never heard of her. It was Bao who read all the Greek bullshit. 
Apparently, she and I shared a few things in common. Your godlike wrath? <laughs> that may have been part of it. <laughs> Mostly, he said it was because... I never missed my shot. Tell you what, if I ever get the chance, you bet your ass I won't flinch again. It's good talking with you, Khan. Khan is funny, though. I tell you what, if I were a hundred years older and she was a hundred years younger, <laughs> ooh, ooh, maybe potentially not. Right, once this one is done then, and um, Captain Drumstick takes an awfully long time to get out of the chair, there we go, we're going to go for mission log three out of five now. So, continue on, past the command controls, we're going to head down to the opposite deck. That's how people from New Zealand say deck. They say deck, of course. Officer Dick. I'm saying Dick. So from here, we're going to turn to the left. Then we are going to turn to the right. Open up the door. And let us see what's going on in Mia. Oh, I know. Interact with the cabinet first, straight in front of us. And we are going to grab the bottle of scotch. This is for the last garrison, Cox. Who, of course, as we all know... Uh, will give us an achievement for it, and that's all this uh, fat douchebag is good for. The old, the old kind of uh, you know one of those. Oh, my country, my rules. Yeah, let's get all them foreigners out of the country. Now, that looking guy, you know, remember. Anyway, into the bedroom or whatever it's called to find the ship registration. This is going to be mission log three out of five. Uh, you can have a look at the data queue manual as. Well, um, you don't have to, but I do think it comes in handy a little bit later on. So, interact with that. Once that's done, head back out of the door. Then we are going to be going to Virgil's room. Not to speak to Virgil, but to spy on him. So, straight down to the crew deck. I mean the crew deck, of course, because I am a British Welshman. Or a Welshy Welshman. Then from here, go straight on, and we'll take a right to the med bay. And here we are, nice couple of bedrooms, straight through to the door. And then what we'll do is look to the right, interact with the computer, smash through that, and that's going to get us the Thorsten Mayer achievement. Encrypted. But I picked up a data cube hacker in that ship graveyard. Should tell me what Virgil is hiding. Hopefully this data hacker I found still works. Bingo. Apparently there's a lot Virgil hasn't shared about his past. So Virgil's not even Virgil. Whatever he's hiding, it was... Not only did Virgil hide his UNN service and his real name, he's also wanted by his own government for desertion. I should try to get more information from him. Right, let's go parlay some drugs off for absolutely no money whatsoever. So. From the main bit, we'll go straight through into the mess hall where you can see Arlen being all like, I need some drugs, man, picture test. <laughs> so, there they are, both of the twins. We're going to press the A button here to give them the medicine. And he's going to be like, Well, oh, thanks, Captain, and that drugs. I assume that's just what drug addicts sound like for some reason. <laughs> or something. Anyway, either or all, it gives us the drug gifter achievement. No problem, bruh. No problem at all. Potentially. So what we'll do, we're going to turn directly around now. Go to the other side, into the kitchen, where we're going to see Virgil van Dyke. Here he is. And then 
what we are just going to do then, we are going to give him the mushrooms, and that's it. Again, the game is a secondary quest. Does ask you if you want to pry into his secret life or his past life. We're just going to press the B button here to give him the mushroom powder, and then we're going to say, Goodbye, my lover. I found some mushroom powder for you to cook with. Bursting with umami. Exceptional. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Get some rest, Virgil. Will do, Captain. And next up then, we will be going for the fourth out of fifth mission log, so go straight in front of us here. And then when we get to this main area again, what we're going to do is head to the left into the crew quarters. We're going to take a right into the crew quarters. And then we're going to take a left. And there is the comms log. Um, fourth out of five. Mission log. So we've only got one left to grab. So happy days. Right. So from here then we're going to go straight again. Take a right this time. Go down to the cargo bay. And then when we do get down to the cargo bay. Go straight in front of you. Interact with Cox. Make sure to give him the scotch bottle for the bottoms up achievement. See. Man he was flying. Hey, Cox. Catch. <sighs> the word you're looking for is and although he's a uh, double-crossing douchebag who just wants his country back, bitten, uh, tell you what, that first tip, that first taste of something you haven't had for a while is excruciatingly good. So straight in front of us then is the last and final mission log. It is the water storage log. Make sure to scan that. So you should now be on five out of five for that, which will get the achievements after we complete the chapter in about ten minutes or so. And then from here, then, we'll just basically head to the right where we can see Maya. Now, before speaking to Maya, press the A button here on the music player to ask Maya about her music. And you can say whatever you want, but it will get us the Martian music achievement. And then get ready for some, <laughs> some flirtatious flirting. And if you're a perv, you will weirdly get turned on by this. And if you're not a perv, you'll probably get turned on too.
Yes. Are you feeling any better? I know you were pretty scared, given how tightly you were holding my hand. I'm pretty sure you grabbed my hand in there. Oh, sure. We can go with that if you want. I'm just saying, I'm here if you need to talk. The only thing we need to talk about is your delusional fantasizing about me. I get it. It must be hard for the boss Meng to express her feelings. <laughs> Especially to the hot Martian engineer who can totally kick your ass. Not according to that scoreboard. My point is, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Hmm. Even if you did clink helmets with me. Clink helmets? What is that supposed to mean? I think you know exactly what it means. Helmet clinker. Typical dumb Martian. You try to kiss a woman, but forget to take your helmet off first. If I did try to kiss you, there'd be no fucking confusion about it. You know, we could stand here talking about hands and helmets all night. Or we could go back to my room and... Settle it. By settle it, are you talking about sex? Only one way to find out. Bruh. If someone is offering it to you on an absolute plate, well, what would you do? I know what my answer would be. I'd probably pre a jack in about 20 seconds and then just go to sleep and cry. But anyway, that's uh, for a completely another story for another day. Let's not depress you out with that one. So, straight up to the ladder then on the right. Now, we do have a big decision to make. So, as we head into the crew quarters, if... So, again, this big decision here will actually affect your decision, which you have to make for... I sleep with Maya the entire um, uh, The end of Chapter 3. So, effectively, if you choose to sleep with Maya, which... As we will be able to see in a moment, a lot of us apparently did. At the end of chapter three, you get to either fight Rayan or uh, he'll trust Rayan. So if we sleep with Maya here, we need to fight Rayan at the end of chapter three. And if we go to our room, we can trust Rayan at the end of chapter three. Obviously, in chapter three, I'll, I'll remind you of that one. Um, so for now, you can actually just make any decision you want. Just as long as you make the correct decision in chapter three. And of course, being the, you know, I just, I, hey, I'm very LGBTQ friendly. So if I want to see two girls kissing, I'm going to see two girls kissing. I'm very much for, I'm very much for that. I will say no more. Be right back. you got to get the lotion. Sat us down in the mess hall. I thought you were dead. And today in the airlock... I thought we were dead. I know. I'm just saying, you're not allowed to die on me, Kamina Drummer. Because I'm not losing the one person in the belt I give a shit about. Captain, 
You're gonna want to see this. There's nothing on the map. By the way, the, the uh, lotion and the uh, tissues were... I don't know if you so uh, can tell, but I've had a bit that? of a cold uh, during this recording, and the lotion was just to moisturize the dry parts of my body, that's all. So, in case you were thinking of anything wrong, no, no, no. But anyway, this is... <laughs> this is the end of episode two. So, again, as long as you've been following along, you would have got all scavenge items, all mission logs, so that'll get you another three achievements here. So that is episode two done. Episode three is a little bit shorter, sort of clocking in around 35 to 40 minutes. So there we go. That is starting to get intense now with natural stuff and pirate stuff and whoa. So, oh, in fact, I'm going to just skip it forward here. So how many of us decided to, to sleep with Maya? 86% of us. Herbs, all of us, but that's all good. Anyway, see you in episode three, guys and cows. Big love.